Welcome everyone to another vintage video. This is another Attic Find, one of the first Power Macintosh. This is an Apple Power Macintosh 8100-80, actually one of the first PowerPC-based Macintoshes introduced by Apple in March 1994, alongside the Power Macintosh 6100 and the 7100 as the high-end model of the first generation of the Power Macintosh family indirect replacement of the Macintosh Quadra 800 that were previously based on Motorola 68000 processors. Actually back in the 90s I have not seen a single Apple Macintosh in Germany. All of our neighbors, friends, uh, family and everyone either had Commodore 64 and then Amiga 500. Some had some Amstrad PC something or whatsoever. As I said in other videos we had a 286 without hard drive and only monochrome video. As far as I remember, all the normal people in Germany grew up without any knowledge of Apple Macintosh back in the day. I think I got this together with the Sun Spark leftover materials that you have seen in the other videos. Back in that day this was total worthless scrap material. 80 MHz, nobody wanted to have this. I even got it without a CD-ROM or hard drive, so I could not even make immediate use of this. This is also using the Apple desktop bus. And um, I think I even brought a mouse for this. This may be relatively new and unused. Port-wise, we have some dedicated video board, but apparently also onboard video for a dual monitor setup. Both are special connectors, while the onboard has uh, S-Video and the 15 uh, non-high density pin sub-D, where you can use an adapter. And even 10 years ago, I probably already got an adapter for this for $14.99, even a decade ago, the standard Apple adapter price. And I think I powered it on once and I had video output. And today I want to find out if it still powers on. Maybe one day we spend some extra time to get Linux working on this. The extra challenge is the case is unfortunately slightly broken. Here at the back it is actually quite nice directly to unscrew. These expansion cards hang a little bit loose here though. Already when this was new the case was not the most loved because people said it was hard to work on. And as you have seen this case plastic thing is already broken. Here also on the side this plastic nose is already broken. This is how I got it as recycling scrapyard material a decade ago. Of course in 2005 nobody wanted an 80 MHz computer, but now we are approaching a retro and museum age for this machine, so they become actually more interesting again. Also broken is the speaker here. I wonder who had the idea to build the speaker at the top. That is of course, maybe even someone spilled some coffee in there. I also read online that to service anything you apparently have to remove the mainboard completely. As I said I got it without the CD-ROM drive and hard disk so I don't even have the matching sliding plastic things here unfortunately. So given the slowness and the incompleteness of the drive bay is why I put it into the basement immediately more or less for future tinkering fun to come. The reason I also didn't do anything with this is it is new bus based. It has this industry standard connector there. There apparently is a Linux port for this but as far as I've seen yesterday this probably still not mainline so there is some Linux fork that was supposed to work on these machines but again given all this obscurity and um, slowness and missing plastic pieces is the reason I did not investigate here anything much further. Now I nearly damaged my fingers to blood on this metal pieces. The memory is apparently here. I wonder how to get the... If I... And this. There also appears to be socketed cache. I read somewhere that the onboard graphic is running from the system memory. So apparently installing more cache also benefits the speed of the onboard graphic. There it is written copyright 1994 Apple Computer Inc. Power Macintosh 
100-80, some onboard crystal audio. And here is this video card with some Philips chip and uh, how to slide this out. As you can see, serviceability was not the greatest even in the 90s at Apple. Really funny is also this flimsy button placement here with really long mechanical switches there to press a button on the PCB. Really funny. Really a little bit fragile. This three centimeter moving plastic piece. Maybe I first see if it still powers on and then we may remove the logic board to take a look on this. It has of course a little bit of historic value with one of the very first PowerPC processors and being the first generation PowerPC Macintosh. And of course the not that popular new bus gives it a little bit esoteric and interesting touch. With the step switches here you can by the way control the video mode of your VGA output. This ADB bus. Of course the keyboard could need some retro brighting and I also wonder Slightly mechanical keys. I wonder how they would type. I never typed on this. So what will happen if we switch it on? This could have okay, the power button on the ADB keyboard and the speaker at least works. So as the speaker works, I assume the CPU should also still work. And we get indeed a question mark folder that you still may remember from your current Macs. And um, let's plug in a keyboard just for the fun of moving the uh, mouse cursor. And also check what resolution we're running and then I take the logic board out and take a look on that. I wonder if I can download some old system 7 or 8 or so. Or even this Linux release maybe. The problem is I don't have so many SCSI C drums laying around here right now. so. Booting this up is a little work of fiddling around and disassembling some, probably removing the CRM of another machine. So, and as you can see, the mouse also moves. It's of course ironic that although I got the machine for free, I probably invested already 30 euros into this even 10 years ago. Um, 15 euro for the VGA adapter and probably around 15 euro for the ADB mouse. As it only came with a keyboard, although thankfully it came with a keyboard. Buying an ADB keyboard for this would of course be even more investment. This is a thing um, for motivated people like me, maintaining a whole distribution for all these architectures. And in 2005, I also got the 40 MHz Spark and 80 MHz may still have been twice as fast as the 40 MHz Spark. Even if you get machines for free, you still spend additional money, um, video adapter, mouse. Theoretically, I even need an Ethernet adapter, this is a mini. AOI Ethernet port there. I need to put in hard drive and CD-ROM and then I still don't have the plastic pieces to properly install the hard drive and so on. So just, and this is only one system on top additional come other system, Spark and MIPS and such. I think more people should keep this in mind and give back to open source people that contribute so much of their spare time and money to develop all the infrastructure and keep it up and running and maintained. This plastic apparently snaps off here. I did not watch any other disassemble videos, so not sure if I'm doing it right. So here are some plastic noses that snap in here, and then it snaps over the PCB here on this side. So, quite a bit of plastic movement disassemble required. Here is, by the way, a battery that, thanks God, did not yet leak. Two memory modules, maybe not that upgraded memory. The PowerPC CPU. There is even a AMD chip from 1991. These are probably the 
a ROM SIM. This is a ROM, interesting. So this is one cache SIM and apparently a ROM SIM. I think I've never seen a ROM SIM that apparently someone already destroyed this SCSI connector quite a bit. That was for sure not me. These are these strange buttons that are pressed with these long plastic levers. And the new bus slots here, as I said, totally standard industry connectors. And apparently one special slot for the graphic. Here, yeah, that is a board. One of the first Apple Power Macintosh logic boards. Unfortunately, mine arrived a little bit broken to me. The SCSI connector and there may be a plastic piece missing for the power button. If this is a power button, I guess. So let's put it back together. Let's hope it still does work. And then we can try to install some software in one of the next videos as well. This is a floppy drive connector. I snapped these buttons out, I guess this was required to get to the PCB. Of course, if you want to get into this vintage retro hardware, you should keep in mind that not to spend too much money on eBay because you can often get these machines in non-working order with blown power supply, capacitors and things like this and oxidated logic board and batteries that leaked. So just to keep these risks of dealing with this kind of old hardware in mind when you make offers on eBay and to keep your own repair skills in mind in case of some auto adjust helped with a Moret pattern and this is 640 by 480. You probably could see this is complicated manual thing here if we could get a nicer resolution as well. So switching the dip switches there a little bit. The first tries did not work but um, now I've chosen mode 5 which is supposed to be separate sync and apparently a mode of 1152 by 870 and of course the picture is already much nicer. I hope you found this first look on a vintage power Macintosh as interesting as I. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. It would be most valuable and interesting for me if you leave comments what you are interested in, if you are more interested in programming videos, system development or if you subscribe for this vintage system looks and disassembly and such and I hope to see you soon.